Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our inspirational interview series. And today we have an awesome guest. We're going to dive into how the unconscious mind is involved in how we live our lives, which is always a fun topic, something I'm keenly interested in. And before we do that, I just want to welcome you all to inspirational interviews. If you haven't been to one of these before, I offer these on Tuesday at 1230 Eastern. And we talk to all sorts of people from, from different areas of life and um, get to hear about learning and teaching and healing modalities that are really beneficial for us all. So it just expands our perspectives and gives a little more benefit to you being a part of this community to continue your learning journey. Um, as I, I love the quote, truth is one, paths are many. And I think it's really important that all of us find the path that works for us. And it's not a one size fits all. We all need to find the path that works best for us. So welcome. If you're here live, we are going live using StreamYard. So if you would like to grant StreamYard permission for us to see your name, that would be fabulous. Hi, Kelly. Happy Tuesday to you. Glad you're here. And um, I'm going to introduce our guest today and bring her on. So Lisa Manzo is an author, speaker, trauma coach, and an NLP master practitioner who also holds a master's degree in education. We have that in common and certifications in nursing matrix therapies, NLP, which is neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis. Her own healing path led through overcoming alcoholism, depression, and misery of existing and not living has led her to healing and to founding her own company to empower others to shift the direction of their lives. Super powerful. So today, Lisa helps entrepreneurs move past their limiting beliefs and the emotional wounds that are holding them back to be more successful in their business, professional, and personal life and you will gain the confidence to rewrite the script of your life from working with Lisa. So without further ado, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. That a great, what a great introduction. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> you know, yes, well, I heard you. what you said in the very beginning and you said about um, picking out what works for you, right? So this is really super important and I'm so glad you said that because when you find a coach, you're not going to do everything that 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 coach does because you're going to it's like shopping when you go to the supermarket you pick something here you pick something there you pick something there you put it in your basket because you know it's going to work for you it's the same for coaching right yeah. so when i'm going to help you you're going to take things from me that really resonate with you that really impact your life and you're going to put them in your basket and you're going to have new tools to move forward in your life and and that's what i've done with my life so yeah. As you said, so three and a half years ago, I stopped drinking alcohol. I was very grateful. I was very miserable. There was no existence. Um, I had no social life. I was existing. Like I said, I was miserable and I stopped drinking alcohol. I said, Some, life, there's more to life than this. There's just more. And slowly over time, um, the first year I did it by myself and I was absolutely miserable. So get help. <laughs> and learn from me and get help and, and move on, move along a little quicker. So the second year I actually, that I wasn't drinking, I actually got help. And then the doors started opening because when you open one door, the, the next one opens and the next one opens. And the first door for me was asking for help. Hmm. And it's super important. It's okay to ask for help. I actually have these little cards that say it's okay to ask for help. And I hand them out to people who have struggled, who struggle with asking. It says, and then on the other side, it says, give yourself permission to be human and then forgive yourself. Mm. So, and it's really important. So I've learned through my own healing. And this isn't just for entrepreneurs. This is for everyone because it starts with you and then you can apply it to your business. You need to start with yourself. So mm -hmm. I, I found a coach that was going to help me heal my emotional trauma. And mind you, it wasn't anything bad. It was just the way my mind um, processed the information as a child because my parents had 
had the skills that they had. They did so much better than their parents. And I've done so much better than my parents. And, you know, it goes down the line in progress instead of perfection. And I'm grateful for that. So, you know, I didn't have this like super traumatic childhood. It's just the way that the information came into my brain. My mother wanted the best for me. And in that sense, I felt like I could never please her because she always wanted the best for me. So she's looking at it this way and I'm a child and I'm like, oh, you know, the child can't do anything right. And so it comes with all those limiting beliefs of not good enough, unworthy and right. going back and healing that. And, and that's when I say emotional trauma It's going back to the child and the things that happened, even good, bad or silly, how they affected you. So my yeah. mother wanted the best for me, made me feel unworthy. Isn't that interesting? And how many other people are out there feeling the same way and they don't understand and like, I had a good childhood. Why do I feel this way? <laughs> you know, and it's just the way your unconscious mind um, in, in internalize the information. Yeah. So all of us, yeah, we, we yes. talk about this too. Like all of us have trauma in our lives and we get, get to figure out how to navigate bringing that into the realm of a gift in our lives like how has that experience been a real gift to us and it's often in uncovering the subconscious beliefs um, and and the mindset that we have adopted without being really aware of it that we're living by in in our lives so it's so powerful that you do this work will you tell us what nlp is Sure. So NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Program. So Neuro is the brain, linguistics is the language, and programming is how we use the brain and the language to program our mind. So it's Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I love Henry Ford's quote is, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So it's all a choice. And I've chosen that I know I can. <laughs> I can. And I'm changing lives just like I changed my own life. And that's what really got me into it. So NLP shows you how to use language to, to change the conversation. And I use it with, I, I use it in my family to improve my relationships, but I mean, and we don't use the word and because it negates everything that comes before it. So I, and so one of the things I use it when I set boundaries and I use it this way. So if somebody asks me out for dinner and I'm super tired, right? And I don't, don't want to go because I know I'm, I'm going to be awful company because like I'm struggling to keep my eyes open. You've, you've all been there, right? So it's just, instead of saying no, and you go, and I learned this from NLP, you say, you know, I really appreciate the invitation and I want to be fully present for you. And I'm super tired today. Is it okay if we reschedule for the time when we're both at a hundred percent so I can, so I can actually focus on you. How can you say no to that? Think about mm -hmm. that, right? So now I've just learned to change my language. So I've empowered myself and set the boundary for myself. But I also empowered that other person by telling them I really want to spend time with you and I want to give you my full attention. So win-win, right? So this is how we use language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how how did you come across NLP? How did it come into your life? Um, so I came across NLP, um, I was in a networking group and I saw this speaker on stage and she was talking about, she did this presentation that she called Unlocking the Secrets of the Unconscious Mind. And she start, she explained just a little bit in 40 minutes about how the unconscious mind works. And it was fascinating to me. And I'm like, wow. And is it that simple? And yes, it is that simple. And there's physiology involved. So just for fun. So we're gonna do this just for fun. So anybody who's watching, lean forward and no, you can't see me, but lean forward and punch your shoulders up, put your head down and try to smile. Can you smile? <laughs> Can I you know. Smile? <laughs> yeah, but it's hard, right? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to smile. So think about that, right? So now sit up straight and try to frown. Can you do it? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. It's it's because I mean, we're laughing. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, anyway, those of you at home, try it and you know, sit up straight. You know, chest out, shoulders back, and try to try to found. It. It's not easy. And you know what? That it's as simple as that. It's changing the physiology, changing your thoughts, just changing your position of your body 
can change the way you're feeling for the whole entire day. Think about mm. that. We, I just showed you that. And anybody who tries it at home, I have a friend, a fly friend. Anybody who tries it at home will see it. And it's just so powerful. And you do the same thing with your mind because everything's a choice, right? Mm. Do I choose to be miserable or do I choose to be happy? You attract what you're what you're putting out there. So, I mean, this this change did not happen overnight. It, it's a process, right? It took me a time to get there. It's going to take me time to get out. And I'm going to put in um, the comments later uh, before and after picture for the people to see. Like, the, I'm a completely different um, person. Plus, I stopped dyeing my hair. <laughs> so I went from brown to, to to not dyeing my hair anymore. Although I got a little blonde left in it. But, That's so. awesome. Yeah. So, so talk to us a little bit about what is the unconscious mind. So the unconscious mind, so we have the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. So think of an iceberg, right? So the, the part above the water is the conscious mind and the part under the water is the unconscious mind, which is the majority of it. So, and the numbers vary depending on whose research that you're looking at. But the numbers that I use is your unconscious mind is for, is 96% and your conscious mind is 4%. So who do you think runs the show here? The 96% or the 4%, right? It's the 96%. And I'll put it to you this way. Have you ever done something and ask yourself, why did I do that? Hmm. You have no idea, right? We've all done that. And I'm like, why did I do that? And then I'll tell you why I did it. Because your unconscious mind has um, three, three things that it likes to do. It likes to keep you safe. It wants to keep you fed. And it wants to reproduce. So chances are you've done this before. And whatever action you took kept you safe, right? It kept you safe in that moment. So your unconscious mind decided, because it's a computer, it decided that you're going to do that again. So to change, you have to pause. And you have to pause. And and I pause a lot. And I'm okay, what do you do? Okay. And then I'm like, okay, what can I do instead? Because that's that incorporates change. So here's another one for you. Fold your arms like this. You know, fold your arms like you always fold them. Okay. Now fold them the other way. You know, fold them the other way that you're not used to folding them. Does that feel weird? Mm -hmm. That's what change feels like in the mind. Okay. So that's what change feels like in the mind. When you're going through change, that's what it feels like. So I give you that physical sensation. So you understand when you're going through this process, when you feel that way, when you're changing and you're, you're rewiring, rewiring your brain, that's what it's going to feel like. And it's uncomfortable. And we always talk about getting into the uncomfort to change, right? So I just, that little thing helps you compare and say, oh, okay, I'm just in the uncomfort. This will pass. Mm -hmm. So how do we get into getting to know our unconscious? So we can do lots of things. Um, journaling is great. And it, and people say this all the time. It's stream of consciousness writing, it's called. And where you put the pen to the paper and you either set a timer and you keep the pen moving for the whole time. Or you say, I'm going to fill up a certain number of pages and be done. And the important thing is to keep the pen moving. So sometimes when I do this, I'll keep asking the question of, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And sometimes I write that out for a page before my unconscious mind will give me up the information. And sometimes I have to come back a couple of times and sometimes I get it instantly. I, I don't know how it's going to come. I do. I will tell you that the more tired I am when I do this, the answers come a lot quicker because when you're tired, the gatekeeper between the conscious and the unconscious mind is tired and the gate is open. So you get access. So the first thing in the morning when you first wake up, you have access to the unconscious mind that that you won't have later in the day when you're wide awake. And then at night before you go to sleep, you have access to the unconscious mind. So all those affirmations that you're doing, do them first thing in the morning when you're not fully awake because they're getting in, they're getting in a lot easier. Or at night, right when you're going to sleep, because they're getting in a lot easier. And, and the unconscious mind's a, a program, right? It's like, it's a computer. Cannot tell the difference between reality and fantasy. That's why people tell you act as if, because when you can see it in your mind, 
you you've given your unconscious mind an order to find a way to get it find a way to do it and find a way to make it a success that's why visualization is so important and we use all these techniques right mm -hmm. so that that's how you access your unconscious mind and then you you also look look for patterns right so i don't i haven't dated in a long time because um, I was picking the same type of person and, and every, you know, I keep dipping my toe back in and I'm like, when I dip my toe back in, I'll, I'll meet somebody and I'm like, okay, not yet because it's the same kind of person. And I know that it will change. So me, I just need to grow a little bit more to get that, that different person because we go towards what we're familiar. And mm -hmm. so, and now I know the next person that asks me out, it has to be uncomfortable. Because if I go out with the person I'm comfortable with, I'm going to go get the, what I got before, right? So I'm going to go for the uncomfort. And that's mm -hmm. where true change happens. It's not easy. And it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Hmm. Yeah. So, so powerful. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about how you work with people. Is it with journaling? Is it with... Um... So right now, so I... I have um, a one-on-one -on -one coaching program um, that I do for, for people that really, really want to move and move now and are, are sick and tired of being sick and tired because that's the most, and I work with the unconscious mind. We go back to the, we go back in your mind, you get into trance, you're fully awake. It's not hypnosis. You go into trance. We bring you back to that. You bring you back in your mind to that place when that first event happened where you say you felt unworthy. And we ask your unconscious mind, what would you need to heal at that point? So you heal that, that three-year-old, that four-year-old, that seven-year-old, and you give them the resources in your mind to heal. It heals everything after that so you can move forward. So I work with that to heal those events. We, we heal people that are negative influences. Like, like mom and, my mom and dad did a great job, and they're still human, okay? So I still cleared them out of my unconscious mind because... They gave me some of their programming that I, I does not serve me, right? Like money's evil and all, you know, all those those things. Like I don't need those programs because they're there. So I can release them by getting disconnecting them from my unconscious mind. And, and I work with people that way as well. And then we go through the emotions. So as I'm working with you, um, is there a lot of guilt? Is there a lot of anger? Is there a lot of shame? What's coming up for you as we go and... and we go in this direction and it's a give and take. We take the history and I, and I tell them what I'm thinking and what are you feeling? Cause it's, it has to resonate with the client as well because, because they're part of it. And I'm like, does this resonate with you? My intuition is, is spot on. And I'll just get thoughts in my head while you're speaking and I'll write it down. And then after your, your history session, I'll tell you, well, I think we should do this, this and this. And how does that resonate with you? And they're like, oh, my God, that's you just hit it right on the head. And it's just because I listened to their story. Mm -hmm. Like last week, I, I um, somebody won one. I was in a group and I somebody won my part of part of my program. Right. And so we had a conversation and I need to have a conversation with you to see because she won three things. And which one am I going to do for you first? And from the conversation, I know I have to do the the least the least emotional thing first because she's she needs to get more comfortable with me right which is totally fine we have to get more rapport together and she's not totally open so we're going to do the fun thing first because i included a fun thing in in the three things there's one we're going to clear a person you know a negative influence we're going to clear an emotion and then we're going to do something about their, their personal life whereas your ideals for your personal life meaning so we'll brainstorm of what you want your life to, life to look at, and then we'll look at your, and we'll pick 10 out of however many you come up with. And then I'll look at it and I'll say, well, you know, there's no money here. There's no relationship here. Do you want to include them? Because people, when I first did this, I didn't even have money on my list. I'm like, we need all need money. We need money to live. We need money to eat. And money wasn't even on my list. And my coach pointed that out. And so we go for the well. What's there spiritually, emotionally, financially? We we get all the health wise, and that's mm -hmm. why I have you because you're steering me in the direction of a more healthy body. Because 
it's not my for it's not my thing and so i'm going to learn from someone who knows exactly what it is it and your program has helped me so much it's it's so it's such a beautiful program that i was like i don't need to do it all i just need to know somebody who does it so that they can help me <laughs> right it's all about who you know right right so you're you're my health coach and, and then i have my finance coach and so you know it's a little bit from everybody because not one person is going to be your be all end all yeah and absolutely i just want to get past the emotions so that you, I'm I'm at peace at this point in my life that I've never had before, because I'm happy. I'm happy with my myself. I used to hate myself. I had such great self loathing, and I'm in a joyful place now. And I want to give that to other people because it's so beautiful. And if you'd have told me five years ago that this was where I would laugh at you, I would have said it's not possible. Mm. And I know it's possible because I did it. And that's the importance of having the picture and showing it because it's a completely complete turnaround. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's powerful to see all the people we have been in our past. Yep. And now we can recognize like, oh, wow, I've grown a lot and learned a lot and, and shifted. And it's true. It's a choice every day of like, of of how we're orienting ourselves, our, our focus. And that's where the unconscious slash mindset pieces come in. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, when you meet that person that that you're full, feeling an instant resistance for, you know what I'm A talking. resistance? Resistance to. You meet somebody new, right? And you're like, I don't think they're my cup of tea. I, I'm just not going to be friendly with them. Mm -hmm. So I invite all of you that the next time that happens to you is to lean into that person because there's something there that you need to learn from that person. So when I first met you, Hannah, back in December. Um, I'm like, wow, if I'd have met you a year before, I would never even have opened that door. And I'm like, I know that there's something here for me because I just know energetically because I could feel it in your energy now. And I wouldn't have opened that door the year before because I wasn't, I wasn't healthy enough. I wasn't healed enough. And mm. so it would have just, it would have scared me and I would have walked away from it. And let me tell you, Changing that and lifestyle and the health and the healing from something I've done my whole life is a, it, it can be a little scary. And I also know that I need to lean into it. And that's why I'm grateful to be in your program and just to be moving forward. So you help people with health on that end and I help people with their emotions. It's just it's just so beautiful that we're all able to help and see who needs what and when. Absolutely. Yes. It, it is. I'm curious, what was your resistance, though? Like when you first met me, was it just like, oh, she's talking about health things that I don't want to do? Yeah. Or was it I'm like, like oh. and I was like this, oh, I'm going to have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to have to actually do something. Yeah. Take responsibility, right? Take responsibility yeah. for and, how you're and, living your life. Yes. And, and it was presented in such a great way that just pick one thing that I can mm -hmm. do because there mm -hmm. are coaches out there. Oh, you got to do this, 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 and this. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. that's way too scary for me. Just so you know, that's way too scary for the unconscious mind. And a lot of coaches put people off because they say you got to do this, this, this baby steps, baby steps, get you the biggest result. Take one yeah. little step, do one little thing and it changes everything. And then what happens is you get momentum. And then you're like, oh, what else can I do? Oh, what else can I do? And that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So um, before we went live, you were talking about waking up in the morning and yes. feeling. Um, what were the words you used? Not enthusiastic. Not enthusiastic. Yeah. I need yeah. some enthusiasm for the day because sometimes mm -hmm. and I'm working on it, right? So today I was just listening to something before I got on here and the person um, was talking about this book about enthusiasm. I'm like, well, maybe I need to get that book because it, it'll. And so what it said was, and it was really so simple. And I was like, why didn't I think of that? Um, what, what about today can I have enthusiasm about? 
what about today? That could be the first thought. What about today? Okay, my mom's coming from New York. I haven't seen her since Christmas. So I can have enthusiasm for that. I have enthusiasm because I'm on Hannah's program and being interviewed today. So yes, check, check. Two things I can have enthusiasm about. And I can have enthusiasm all week because my mom is here and I, I don't see her very often, right? There are other things I can have enthusiasm for. Okay, I woke up this morning. I cannot be enthusiastic. You know, there's people that aren't waking up in the day. So yeah. pick something. You can pick something that you can be enthusiastic about and and momentum happens. So that's what I'm gonna do. Pick something every day so that my momentum builds. And when I get up, it'll change. It will take mm. time. It's not gonna happen instantaneously as much as we want. It's a process. Change is a process. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember, I think it was um, Eckhart Tolle had um, in one of his books, I don't remember which one, he talked about how we constantly have a choice and those choices are conflict. So being in direct conflict with the reality of what is, you know, so waking up in the morning and being like, I don't want to wake up. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this day. Right. So that's choosing conflict. The second one was acceptance of just recognizing, okay, I'm here. I woke up. It's a day. It is. Right. Yeah. And then the third one is enthusiasm. Yes. And so getting excited, like what, what can I get enthusiastic about today? And that, that learning was so powerful to me and it really helped shift how my orientation towards like take ownership for how I was showing up. You know, if I was showing up and being like, I don't like this or I don't want to be here or it's like, I'm creating my own conflict. Right. You're and, exactly right. and owning that is, is super, super powerful. And I find that curiosity is a big part of that too, Lisa. Do you like a big part of finding enthusiasm is getting curious about what is possible. It is. It's really, it's really interesting. So just getting curious, right? So my, my daughter just moved to Vegas, right? And which they, is where they, you live for everybody watching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're right. Thank you. I need to <laughs> help with that. So she just moved to Vegas and according to her and her, her fiance that um, there's many more food options out here than in New York. And I'm like, never really gave it some thought, but yes, there are. There's so many different kinds. Like, so now we have a list right? We have a list of restaurants and food we want to try. So yesterday, yesterday, she, when I went by her house, she goes, what, I, I said, I'm hungry. I said, let's go get something to eat. She, where do you want to go? I said, I don't know, pick something off the list. You know, just pick something off the list. It's like, so we took two things off yesterday and we added two more things on. <laughs> yeah. So you're using that to explore. And yes. And, and to be yeah. curious. So it's, and I didn't realize it until you said it. It's a great way to be curious. Okay, so have a list. And next time you're, you're, you're finding yourself without enthusiasm, oh, what's on my list? Let me go pick something and go do it. What a great idea. Yeah, yeah, getting curious. like Or, or just going into the day, like, I wonder what's going to happen today that I didn't plan. Right. Something, something is going to happen today that's just yes. magical or cool, yes. really I, fun. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. That, that curiosity. Well, oh my goodness. We're at the end of our time. Tell us, tell our folks where they can find you and, and get to know more about what you do. Okay. So I'm in the link. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a calendar link coffee, virtual coffee call. If you'd love to hear more about it, I'd love to tell you, I'd love to talk. Everybody knows me, knows I love to talk. <laughs> Happy to talk to you about it. Um, I'm also having an NLP weekend, two days at the end of the month. I'll put a link in for that as well. And today there's an action discount if you're interested. If you want more information before signing up, happy to talk to you about it, anything. Just take action. Do something. Change your life. It's all in your hands. It's all your choice. Do something. If not with me, with somebody else, make a list, pick something, do it empower yourself. That's what I have. I'll put everything in the comments. It'll be awesome. And I'd love to hear from some of you. And for those of you who are not comfortable with either, either of those options, DM me. Okay. Happy to answer. 
Well, thank you so much, Lisa. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your visit with your mother. That sounds Thanks. wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. See you soon. Bye. Bye. All right. The wonderful Lisa Manzo. Glad to have her here. I hope you all found that inspirational interview inspiring. And we'll be back next week with another inspirational interview. And um, for those of you watching in real time, I want to remind you all that next week we are shifting the time for yoga in our group as well. So we'll be moving to, to an eight o'clock yoga time. We're going to try that out as my family shifts into school mode and getting kids out the door, <laughs> which is happening right now during yoga, which isn't working out so well. So thank you all for being here. Feel free to um, message Lisa and be in touch with her about her offerings and discovering what your unconscious mind can teach you. And so you can live a more alive, awake, and empowered life. We'll see you all soon. Take care.